Hi, welcome to Monterey is Cooking. I'm John Pisto. Special guest today, Johnny Rivers. Johnny, good to see you again. Thank you so much for coming. Man, I know you're such a busy guy. Thank you. Really, well, really appreciate it. It's always a pleasure up. to see you. Well, you know, Johnny Rivers is an old family friend, and our mothers and fathers were, were friends, and man, they used to cut it up pretty good. Oh, yeah. I was my sister Josephine and Elaine and Vince and oh, yeah. Pierre. And the big fan, the big extended Rosine. family. There. <laughs> it was, they used yeah. to have beach parties, barbecues, get together at each other's houses. Great I know teams. we had some nice, I know you invited everybody to Las Vegas one time where you were right. playing. Uh, one of the big clubs there. Yeah. He invited the whole all the whole family over there. They just had a blast. Oh, yeah. He had some nice pictures of it too. Um, Johnny, geez, you you've been around for for I mean you, you really have some staying power. Your songs are heard practically every day. Uh, you put the radio on and man, your songs are being played. Um, Nate, what's some of the songs that you that you've done over the, the years? Well, my first big hit was Memphis, the Chuck Berry song. You know. And uh, then I did another Chuck Berry song, Maybelline. We had a hit with that, of course, Mountain of Love, which I played. Mountain of uh, Love was another big uh, one. Midnight Special. Mm -hmm. And it was also the theme for that television show that Wolfman Jack hosted. For, oh, yeah. It ran for 12 years. Wow. And then, of course, we did Secret Agent Man, which was also a theme for a television show and also became a big hit. And Austin Powers. That was yeah. The, the, yeah. And uh, well, Rock and Pneumonia, which was an old New Orleans song. Uh-huh. That we used to play. I used to play in my high school band. Uh, what else? So I did a couple of Motown songs. I had big hits with "Baby I Need Your Lovin'" and "Tracks of My Tears." Mm -hmm. "Summer Rain" was a big hit. Summer and Rain. then uh, uh, there was one. There was a movie about a, a, a baseball scout. Uh, "Slow Dancing" was that in it? No, he there was the, the there was a um, he kept eating sunflower seeds, and that was a whole theme. That was your song. Was it, you were was singing it, it. Was it Rockin' Pneumonia? Yeah, Rockin' Pneumonia. That's that the was, one. Oh, that yeah, was okay. great. Yeah. That was absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Um, and, uh, well, Secret Agent Man was recently in Austin Powers yep, right. and the uh, Steve Martin, Eddie Murphy movie, Bowfinger. Oh, it had yeah. a nice featured slot in both movies, which Holy was great. Smoke. That's yeah. fabulous. Well, you, uh, would you play us a song today? Sure. Um, uh, right. Here's a song I wrote that was a, uh, uh, a number one record for, for me back in the 60s. How can you tell me how much you missed me? When the last time I saw wouldn't even kiss me. Yeah, that new guy you've been seeing sure gets around. Well, welcome back, baby, to the far side. favorite song. She loves that. Well, um, man, that's, that gets me right in the throat. <laughs> uh, John, you like wine. Oh, yeah. Yes. Sure Our sponsor today is Shine Vineyards, and they want to take us on a tour of their tasting room down in Slaughter's Valley. So let's go take a little short trip. Folks, we're in the tasting room at Shide Vineyards, and with us we have Scott. 
Hi, John. And Kurt. Welcome, John. Hi. Scott is Scott Scheid, president of the company. And Kurt is Kurt Volnick. And mm -hmm. he's in charge of all the grape production. And we're talking 6,000 acres of it. And that's a lot of grapes. A lot of vines, John. A lot of vines. <laughs> uh, Scotty, maybe you could tell us how to get here and how far we are from the peninsula. Sure. Do it, please. We're about 45 minutes from Monterey Peninsula right now, straight down US Highway 101 mm -hmm. um, at the corner of Hobson Avenue. It's okay. about, about five miles past the little town of Greenfield. Okay. And people, if they want to come and spend a whole day down here, there's other uh, wineries that are all close by. Perfect way to spend a day to uh, taste some of our Monterey County wines. Yeah, we have the maps right here. Good Very place good. to start and okay. work your way back up. Good. Um, so, Kurt, maybe you can tell us what you do. Well, John, I take care of um, all these vineyards, oversee mm -hmm. the cultural practices, the pruning practices, things mm -hmm. of that nature, and also the harvest. Wow. So, um, we, we dial in the grapes specifically for our customers and uh, manage all those deliveries so that they can make the premium wines. And in mm -hmm. fact, um, if you'd like, I'll take you out to our vineyard that's adjacent to the tasting room here okay. and share with you um, our demonstration vineyard. This should be interesting. Let's go take a look. We're in the demonstration vineyard. Folks, and let me remind you of something here. This is December, okay, in California, all right? And you <laughs> might see a little wind here, but there, it plays a very important part in our vineyards here. Uh, Kurt, explain, please. Yeah, well, John, what happens every afternoon during the growing season mm -hmm. is the winds come up and blow down this valley um, in the Salinas area, Salinas Valley. And those winds, what they do is they bring cooling air from the ocean. Mm -hmm. Those cooling air, that cooling wind that comes through delays the maturity of our grapes as we grow them in Monterey County. It's that delayed maturity that allows for additional hang time of the grapes and allows for greater uh, flavor extraction from our grapes than you would find in other growing regions. So very the wind good. is very favorable to high quality. Okay, very good. Now, let's, let's explain to us from the, from the bottom up. About I sure the will. Good. Well, these vines were planted, this vine in front of us was planted about four years ago. And we put in a little vine here and grafted it and we started training up that young vine over the period of a couple of years. When we get up here in this portion of the vine, you can see these green ties, we develop what they call a cordon. And so this vine is trained in what they call a bilateral cordon system. And cordon in French means arm. And so what we do this time of year, John, is we start pruning these vines to get ready for next year's crop. So let me point out to you something here that's very important to understand. On, on the vine right here, you have a bud. And these buds have to be spaced appropriately along the cordon in order for the fruit to develop uh, spaced properly so it's not overcropped and so that we can get full development, full characteristic of the ripe fruit. So what I'm going to do for you now is I'll prune through and show you what we try to do during the winter time. So I make a cut there, leaving behind a spur. So this is a cordon spur pruned vine. I'll go ahead and cut these little spurs down. And then we have something that's growing out of position. I'll remove that so we don't have fruit that's inferior and come through here. And once again, leave buds. That's it. So this is a pruned cordon. Very, very interesting. Okay, folks, there you have it. Well, a very, very interesting tour of the winery. The tasting room is just really, it's really come a long way since the last time we filmed down there. Uh, I thank everybody again. Nice job. Okay, next dish. I've been dying to do this one, okay? Everyone does lamb shanks. Now, we had somebody write in on our column and ask me about lamb shanks. Well, you know, there's lamb shanks, and then there's lamb shanks. You got front legs, and you got the back legs. Folks, this is a lamb shank. Not those little scrawny things you get in some places, the ones you buy. I mean, they're what, two bites? There's nothing there. This is a lamb shank. Now, I've been thinking about how to cook these. And fortunately, uh, we're in mushroom season here. So we've got some nice porcini to put in there. This is a way I like to cook these. 
Now, I don't know if you're going to be able to find, this is very hot. I don't know if you're going to be able to find these this way. These are called French. I know these are available for the restaurant trade. I don't know if, uh, if you can find them probably in a good first class butcher shop, you probably could. Okay, we're going to salt and pepper everything real good. A little salt. And I'm going to do, you know, the way I've been, I've been experimenting, instead of using any stocks, I've been using um, red wine. Now, I'm sure Scott's going to love to hear that because I use a lot of red wine cooking. Okay, this is going to splatter like crazy. But be very careful. Okay. So what we want to do is brown this. All right, this is going to take a few minutes. Okay, you see how these get nice and brown? And you see what's happening to them? The bone is starting to, the meat is shrinking from the bone. Okay, pull this out. And we use some of that fat. Very careful. First thing is turnips and rutabaga. Carrots, leeks, butternut squash, and dried uh, chestnuts. Why am I using dried chestnuts? Because I'm on a chestnut thing since coming back from Corsica, and I know we're up in Mendocino recently doing a mushroom uh, mushroom foray for with my buddy David Aurora. And look what I'm going to put. I'm going to put some mushrooms. Boy, these are sure kind of puny. But whoop. Whoop. What do I see here? Uh-oh. Look who's here. Watch out. Hey, Hi, David. John. How you doing? Hey, how are you, David? Fine. Just great. Well, well there's a couple porcini. Well, yeah. I thought these were mushrooms. Well, those are... Those mushrooms, are, but these are mushrooms. These, uh, hey, okay. now we're talking. Yeah. All right. So, D uh, David, David is the author of these two books, folks. You want to know about mushrooms? These are the ones. Mushrooms Demystified and All That the Rain Promises and More. These are the books. David, thank you. Yeah, if you have those books, then you can find these. But never in Monterey, right? Right. Santa right. Cruz. Yeah. Santa Cruz, yeah. Good, thank yeah. you. Okay, boy, we're going to cut these guys All up. Right. Look at this. This is beautiful. Oh, boy. So, David, how was your foray this year up in Mendocino? Boy, that's a lot of fun. Oh, it was great up there. Wasn't it and good? Yeah, yeah. It was great. And I go there now because I can't find any around here. I've taught so many people to look for mushrooms. <laughs> I can't find any here. <laughs> I went out today to my favorite patch, not a mushroom in sight. Well, David, I want to thank you for bringing those on. Okay? Um, nice seeing what you. What is it you're cooking here? Okay, this is we're putting all these vegetables together. I know you you love vegetables. Yeah. And you eat meat once in a while. Yeah. I Definitely do. love to eat mushrooms. And, you know, I got to say, you know, David and I have traveled lots of places together. And I know David likes to eat mushrooms simple as possible. And the less you do to them, the better for you. I don't barbecue them or... Right. Or, you know, fry them or lightly grill them or, or steam them. You know, I think steaming is, is the way to go now, you oh, know? Oh, yeah, delicious that way, yeah. Yeah, steam them in a pouch or something. I mean, that is definitely, definitely the way. And this has chestnuts in it, huh? Yep, this is your favorite. Right. I know you love those chestnuts. And we got yeah, squash yeah. and all these beautiful vegetables. This is going to cook down and become part of our sauce, you know? Okay, Let's great. Keep putting these in. I can hardly wait. Okay. Okay, Dave. Thanks right. for stopping by. All right, sure. See you. Nice guy. Now, we're going to put some more. I'm going to put some thyme in here. Roughly chop it. Okay, now you got to saute this real good, all right? But because we're moving along, I'm going to put, I'm going to put the wine next. Now, what I'm using is Scheid's Cabernet. And like, you gotta use a good quality wine. You don't wanna use cheap wine for this, folks. Okay, now you do this. Sink it in there, like this. 
and like this, and like this. And if it needs more liquid, you put a little chicken stock, it's fine, or you put a little water. And um, you could put a little bit more wine if you want. Either one. Okay, make sure they're in there. Now, doesn't that look nice? That looks good already. You put it like this, gently push it on the back, put it on low, medium, and uh, check it in about two hours. When we come back, I'll put it together for you, the whole dish. Wait, yes, this is gonna be fabulous. Okay, now, to put this dish together, get my trusty Instant polenta. Remember, I always tell you, folks, don't do polenta the old way. It takes too long. And even in Italy, they use instant. Six minutes and you got it. Real easy. Now, you know, I've been thinking about the wine we're going to have with this. And um, I talked I talk to boys and coming over. In fact, they're here. <laughs> Come on in, guys. Hey, John. How are you? How you doing, pal? Good, good to see you. Hey, John. Scotty, how Thanks are you? Thanks a lot for coming down. Okay, all right. You're welcome, pal. We live, now, we love to show you what we're doing down oh, there. Oh, well, you know, you guys are so unique in the wine business. You know, I mean, it's so different than what people are doing. Six, 6,000 acres? How many? Almost oh. 6,000 acres of wine. Wow, beers. that's a lot of juice. Thank you for the pad. Only, the, only a teeny little bit of wine. No kidding. My, my, my. Um, what do you think we should have with this, you guys? What do you think now, what are we having all together here? Okay, we got we got uh, lamb shanks. Ta -da. Those are awesome. All right. Then we now the lamb shanks have have the um, have these chestnuts that are real sweet, and it has all these vegetables. You know, we put in about six different kind of root vegetables, which all have a lot of sugar in them, also. So you know, I think. You know, I, I, I would like for you to try even a white wine with it. What do you think? I'd love to. We've got a white wine that's been uh, aged on French oak, buttery, big wine. It can stand up to some of the richest meats. So I think it would be absolutely wonderful to try our Chardonnay with this. This is made to order. I, I came with a red wine, John, but I'm going okay. to whip out the white for this one. Okay, good. All right. You know what? This is ready to go. And I think maybe we're going to try the, the uh, Chard. I think it's a great idea. Let me, let me pour you a glass, John. Oh, please. I won't say no. I'll drink a little first. Okay. Drink a... You want a full glass? Oh, no, no. Just a... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Mmm. It smells very good. Okay. Let's put this Thank dish you, together, folks. Look what we're going to do here. The rest of it I save for my daughter. In the morning, I like to fry this for her. And fry it and then put maple syrup on it. Very good. Okay, now, to put this dish together, we go like this. Oh, look how tender these guys are. Like this. Wow! Falling off the bone. Falling right off the bone. Now, you know what? This is really a man's, a man's dish. And it takes a man to make this one only because everything's very heavy and big. <laughs> okay, so you gotta have be a weightlifter. I mean, look at the size of these guys. Okay, now see all these vegetables? Mm -hmm. Now we just put them like this, we put them like this, we put them like this. I mean, doesn't this just feel like a winter dish? Cold outside, frosty windows. Maybe even a little rain. Fireplace is going, the kids are in the background. Nice soft music. Glass of wine in your hand. Sure. Mm -hmm. Lamb shank in your other hand. Those are hefty lamb <laughs> shanks. There you have it. Um, 
We're all dying to taste this. <laughs> but boys, I want to thank you for coming on. And thanks for the tour down there. It was very, very, very interesting. You know, I want to do a red wine with this also. Oh, okay. great opportunity. Let's so, do it. Yeah, we'll do a red with this. And we're going to do a white and a red. Because we've been liking to, like to uh, break the rules, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And try white wines with, with red meats. And you know, surprisingly, it looks very good. Yeah. So, you know, folks, we'll see you later. We're going to try this stuff out. As for the recipe, this one's a killer. Really, really good. And don't forget, the wine also, first class. Thanks, Thank guys. You. Thanks, John. See you next time. Long distance information. Get me Memphis, Tennessee. Get me find a party to try to get in touch with me. Now she did not leave a number, but I know who placed the call. Cause my uncle took the message and he wrote it on the wall. Get me information, get in touch with my Marie. She's the only one who called me in from Memphis, Tennessee. Now a home is on the side side, high up on a ridge, just a half a mile from the Mississippi Bridge. Oh, <laughs> Bravo.